In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves for the saving mysteries, let us call to mind our saints and ask for God's pardon and strength. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them. O my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle upon you your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Now, a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister. Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sister sent word to him saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, this illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. He said this and then told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I'm going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death, while they thought that he meant 
ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died. And I'm glad for you that I was not there that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him, for Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, pet up again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you are always here. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial hands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. 
Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what, had, what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I would like to begin by inviting you to join me in repeating the words of Jesus to Lazarus in today's gospel passage. And we are going to do this bearing in mind the current need for physical distancing. We are going to do this in groups of two. So wherever you are now, if you have someone physically around you, you are going to turn to that person. But if physically you are alone wherever you are now, then think of someone dear to you. And you are going to raise your voice like Jesus. And you are going to say to that person, Lazarus! Come out. So I give you a few seconds to decide on who will be your partner. For me, I'm going to turn to John, the musician here. He's going to be my Lazarus. I believe you're all ready now. So we're going to repeat the words of Jesus to Lazarus, the top of our voices. So let us go. Lazarus! Come out! Amen. Yes, we spoke as Jesus and we listened as Lazarus. We have done this because Jesus is in each of us and because Lazarus is in each of us. At our baptism, we were reborn in Christ. And by baptism, we now share in the priesthood, in the kingship, and in the prophetic office of Jesus. By our baptism, each one of us now is a priest, a king, and a prophet. And today's Second reading, St. Paul reminds us that each one of us who belongs to Christ now has the spirit of Christ. And so we are able to speak as Christ. On the other hand, there is Lazarus in each of us because each one of us is either dead or dying, physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, and you can keep naming. And now, considering the battle the world is fighting with the coronavirus, you can see that the world is either dead or dying. Currently, in many parts of the world, many cities are on lockdown. And many of us are locked up in our rooms, just like Lazarus was locked up in the tomb. So to each one of us, Jesus is saying, Lazarus, come out. But this is not an invitation to disobedience. This is not telling you to physically come out of your rooms and endanger your lives and the lives of others. Because beyond being physically locked up in our rooms, some of us are locked up 
in fears. Some of us are locked up in darkness. Some of us are locked up in hopelessness. But Jesus is inviting us to come out and trust in him who has the last word. Today's Sunday gives the third and the last of the three instructions to the catechumens coming from the gospel according to John. The catechumens are those preparing for the reception of the three sacraments of Christian initiation, baptism, confirmation, and first holy communion. Two Sundays ago, the instruction was given using the symbolism of water. Last Sunday, the instruction was given from the gospel according to John using the symbolism of light. Today, the focus is on life. And like I said last Sunday, after this Mass, I encourage you to go back and read all the readings for today's Mass and find out how many times the word life is mentioned. Three of these elements, water, light, and life, come together every year at the liturgy of the Easter Vigil. We encounter water at the baptismal font, the water of baptism. We encounter light, Christ who is light in the Easter light. And finally, we encounter life in the risen Christ who is our life. The prophecy in today's first reading finds literal fulfillment in today's gospel passage, in the story of the raising of Lazarus. In reading the story of the raising of Lazarus, we wonder, why did Jesus wait until Lazarus was dead before his intervention? Why did he not intervene while Lazarus was sick and was still alive? And Jesus answers, it is for the glory of God. Remember, before this time, Jesus had raised two others who were dead. The daughter of Jairus and the son of the widow of nine. But there was something different here. In the case of the daughter of Jairus, she had just died when Jesus brought her back to life. In the case of the son of the widow of nine, he had just been placed in the coffin when Jesus brought him back to life. But in the case of Lazarus, Lazarus was already in the tomb for four days, four days after his death, and Jesus brought him back to life. In doing this, Jesus is making it clear to us that with God, there is always hope. Because in the case of Lazarus, it was like a hopeless situation. But yet, Jesus brought him back to life to let us know that when it comes to God, there is always hope, even in the grave. And like St. Paul would later say, the power of God is made manifest in our weakness. God is always at his best when we are at our worst. God is always up to something when we are up to nothing. When Jesus told them to take away the stone from the tomb, they thought that Jesus wanted to see the face of Lazarus for the last time. And so they had to tell him, it's already four days that he died. And why the mention of the four days? There is something significant about four days here. 
At that time, and in that culture, it was believed that when a person dies, the spirit of the dead person will continue to hover around the body of the person who has died for three days. But on the fourth day, the person would have decayed beyond recognition. And so the spirit will no longer be able to recognize the face, and then the spirit will finally leave the body of the dead person. So it was on that fourth day, when it was clear that the spirit had departed the area where the body was, that Jesus came to the amazement of those who were around. He brought Lazarus back to life, not minding how far the spirit had gone away from the body. This miracle of bringing Lazarus back to life happened in a place called Bethany. The name Lazarus means God helps, while Bethany means house of affliction. And so what is the message here? That this story is not just the story of that single man, Lazarus, who was brought back to life. It is more importantly the story of how God helps those who live in the house of affliction. Many of us, if not all of us, experience afflictions in various ways. Some families are as good as dead because mom and dad are no longer in talking terms. Mom and dad now ignore each other. In some families, the teenager in the family is battling addiction to drugs. For some of us, the same sin we continue to take to the confessional, we see ourselves falling back to them and we seem to make no progress. For some, maybe the doctor has told you the date of your death because he has named the disease you are battling incurable. Some have lost their jobs. There are even some who are not doing well in school. And even at the moment, the world is an entire Bethany, a house of affliction as a result of the current pandemic. In the midst of all this, you are Lazarus. I am Lazarus. Let us invite Jesus to our house of affliction. And Martha said to Jesus, Master, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. That sounds like an expression of anger, an expression of disappointment. But Martha did not stop at that. She went on to make a profession of faith. But even now, I believe that whatever you ask of God, God will do for you. Presently, we share the sentiments of matter, expressing our anger and our disappointment as a result of what the world is facing now with the coronavirus. There are some who are angry and wondering was Jesus on vacation when the virus found its way into our world? Some are even suggesting that God sent this virus to the world as a punishment because of our sins. It is okay for us to be angry. It is okay for us to share the sentiment of matter. But let us also go on with matter to express our faith in Jesus saying that no matter the amount of damage is already caused, even now we believe that if Jesus speaks to God on our behalf, something good will certainly come out of this. Regarding Lazarus, Jesus said, this illness will not end in death. It is for the glory of God. But contrary to that, Lazarus died. And after four days, Jesus brought him back to life. 
And that is where the glory of God comes in. For with that, Jesus is teaching us a lesson that God is unstoppable, that nothing, not even death, can stop the plan of God. And so for us now, when we think about the number of those that have been inflicted and afflicted by this virus, the number of those that have died, how many medical personnel and facilities have been overwhelmed, how many days, how many weeks, how many months that this has been going on, we may be tempted to give up hope. We may be tempted to think that it is too late already. But remember, even when Jesus is four days late, he is still on time. My dearly beloved in Christ, Jesus called Lazarus back to life. Miracle, right? But after a while, Lazarus finally died. And so what is good about this? The message here is living on this earth forever is not what God has created us for. The miracle of bringing Lazarus back to life is a preparation for what Jesus is out to do for us ultimately. And it is to give us eternal life, to live with God forever and to never face eternal deaths. For even if Jesus decides to set the world free from all diseases, from all illnesses, a time will come that each one of us will still die. And so ultimately, the most important gift that Jesus has come to give to us is eternal life after this world of shadows to the world of realities. My dearly beloved in Christ, we all have our different betternies. We all have our different houses of afflictions. In our various houses of afflictions, Jesus is calling out to us, Lazarus, come out. And as Norman Cousins is known to have said, death is not the greatest loss in life. The greatest loss in life is what we allow to die inside of us while we are still alive. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things we are made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who had spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We believe that God always hears us, 
And so we have the confidence to express our needs and the needs of the world and believe that we will be heard. For Pope Francis, for all those assembled to worship, our Sacred Heart Parish family, and our greater community, through persistent prayer, may we grow in faith, in patience, and in gratitude during this time of crisis and separation. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the Church, may we enter the coming holy days in peace and open ourselves to an outpouring of God's grace. We pray to the Lord. For those who have been preparing for sacraments, that the coming of the Holy Spirit into their lives may lead them to see the world around them through the eyes of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for government leaders, may they work to release those trapped in tombs of fear and alienation keeping the safety and well-being of their citizens top of mind. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are unable to stay home during the crisis, may God protect them in their serving of the public, protect their family and friends, and keep them healthy. We pray to the Lord. For those suffering with the coronavirus, all who are ill and their families, for the homeless and all who feel isolated at this time, and for the prayers we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. For all those who grieve, may they find comfort and hope in the words of our Lord in today's gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For the special intentions of Father Tom Kiley, Alice Bostrom, Simon Kittler, Manuel T. Garces, Jr., we pray to the Lord. For the repose of the souls of John Anthony Francisco IV, for the repose of the soul of Patti Baroncoto, and for the special intentions of Antonio da Luz, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. God of life, hear the prayer of your people gathered to hear words of freedom and release. As Easter nears, keep us closer to you in mind, heart, and spirit. We make our humble prayer through Christ our Lord. Water and wine. Now we come to share the dignity of Christ and put himself to share in our humanity. Thanks to the Lord of all creation. 
but through your goodness we have received a while of our fruit of the vine and work of my hands to come as spirit for drink. Let's be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite hearts we will be accepted by your Lord and my sacrifice in your sight is a pleasant to you, Lord God. Wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my dearly beloved in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and have instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith. Graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to a new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalt and praise as we acclaim. Full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to each setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Damien, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and John, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Bow down and pray for God's blessings. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. <laughs>